Welcome back guys to part 10, act 10, and this is the final act in the game. It's not the end of the game, because the end game is really where the game actually starts. <laughs> but the campaign must be completed. So, starting right off, uh, we're just going to go walk uh, to the cathedral rooftop. And we're going to be saving Bannon at the start. So we're going to go hug the left side. Bannon is going to be getting attacked, and we're going to have to save him. Oh, that's a lot of damage that we're taking. But soon we will not take this much damage. Be so much tank here very very soon I'm excited all right so now we talk to Bannon he's gonna say thanks and to say meet us back at the docks but we don't need to do that till later Look at this uh, ghost see if it drops anything good nothing so this one drops let me double check on what this one's dropping for currency so we get gold obviously from it and then crimson iron ore okay so that that one's really easy to get like the material oh uh, we i guess took off one of our uh auras there we go still leveling up that flicker strike for later if you want to do the same you can get a flicker strike gem too and level it up or you can just buy one for one chaos eventually you'll you'll get a level 21 for one chaos or like it's really not that big of a deal there is another strategy of uh, leveling up gems and then selling them, but it's it's not that big of a deal because it takes so dang long to get to level 20. And for a beginner's guide, I don't think it's even worth like mentioning. <laughs> it's 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 something where you really need to know kind of what's going to be selling in the market, and then there's like kind of a, an RNG with it at the very end. So uh, you you basically quality it up if you really want to go for the big risk and get big reward. That's a lot of uh, what Path of Exile is towards the end game. It's a lot of big risk, uh, huge investment into uh, seeing if it's going to work out or not. So you can play the game that way, or you can just get guaranteed results, which is kind of like how I like to play the game. I just I just save up the currency and I get the item. I don't try to do too much RNG, except for like I can craft. I'm really good at crafting gloves because I know like how to craft them, specifically with uh, these Eldritch currencies. And it's another way that if you want to get ahead in the game without playing the game you can do it but i just don't find it to be fun to sit in town and just do crafting but uh yeah those are the only things that i really really enjoy crafting because I, I feel like that they're super easy to hit and, it, and you get a lot of money if you are really good at crafting certain things uh, it requires a lot of a lot of knowledge though <laughs> so this isn't runescape no runescape man just getting into PoE. Oh, Zach, follow my full walkthrough beginner's guide. We have it for this exact build that you're seeing. And you can see, I mean, most of the stuff is dying within one to two hits. Very, very smooth beginner-friendly build. So once we're in the Ravage Square, which is where we're at right now, uh, we want to get the waypoint if we can. It's going to be an area that we can't access soon. gonna be like kind of walled off but we want the waypoint here this is what is important here so we get this waypoint and then what we need to do next is from the waypoint we go to the ossuary there's going to be a trial of ascendancy in this area so we've already got two of them done and the next one will actually be pretty big we're gonna get the one where we get massive amounts of bonus damage For the hideout, if you need to get a hideout, can get it over there. You, you don't, you don't actually need to get this item, but it was, it was over there. We get some like some trashy item that he'll give us. <laughs> Maybe we'll get one chromatic orb from it, but it, it won't really matter too much. Oh, I got hit by one of those. If you get hit by one of those, it slows you down. But we are just one level away. Nice. So we have all these done, and that means we get to do another trial. Am I going to do it right now? Nah. We're gonna get, we're just going to complete the campaign, and we can do that like after we do the campaign. do these ones because we get a big little bonus what's our uh actually rating 3430 okay i wonder 
if we get enough mana, we should just be able to sustain it. I mean, I'm looking at the potion. Eventually, it just starts draining too much. Like, you can't keep up with it. Okay. We go to the Forbidden Archives. Now, is there a point of doing this? Not really. But all we needed with that area, by the way, is just a Trial of Ascendancy. So you can get some of these rewards. So since we lost, we're, we're going to be losing out on Onslaught in our helmet. Because this helmet just gives us Onslaught 100%. That's all it does. The, the rest of the stats are garbage. Uh, I'm going to grab this flask. So now I have Onslaught. And what I'm going to do is I get to remove, let's say, either the flask over here. Uh, the... Let's see what it gives. Okay, well. I'm going to remove the healing... For that, and then we can give this to Wayland if we got it. You're gonna get it anyways. It's just respect points. It doesn't give you any skill points. So, like I said, it doesn't really matter if we grab it or not. And then we have another skill point. We're gonna get this extra spell suppression. And now our spell suppression is pretty close. It says 100, but it's actually not. I think we're at 95. So we're gonna and we end up getting 105 unless our item has spell suppression, which this one doesn't have, which is fine. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, another thing we could look at, because the next upgrade that we get will be probably pretty big. We have 25 of these. Watch how much evasion rating that we get from this. Every single one of these is giving us, like, a good amount. So if we just put these in, you don't have to put these in. I'm just showing you guys kind of how they work. Um, we can get a lot more uh, stats. So you can see now we have just a lot more evasion coming very soon. Once we get level 67... It's gonna be good, man. All right. So next up, oh, what we could do also. This is a six socket. Now, it'd be great if we just used one fuser and got a six link. The chances of that happening are so incredibly low. But uh, how much? How many do I have actually? Should we RNG all of them? Because uh, what these are worth, I guess four. F four is about worth one chaos orb. So I can basically get two chaos orbs or randomize this and see what we get. For the sake of the video, I'm just going to do it. I wouldn't really recommend this, by the way. I think it's much better. Just get a chaos orbs. Just buy a six link. It, you can get a six link for super, super cheap. Uh, I mean, I would say probably about 10 chaos orbs should get you a, like an okay corrupted six link. But just for the sake of doing this, you could try to go for a, you know, five or six link here. And let's see if we can get it. Now, you want to do this slow if you're just looking for like a, a five. Because right now this is a four and then a two. Uh... Now we have another four and a two. It's okay. I'm not going to uh, go anymore because it's kind of a waste. But you can see if I wanted to run like Leap Slam or something over here, uh, it is an option. But uh, now we are going to go uh, back to the Ravaged Square since we're already done with the Ossuary, which was the trial. Now we're going to go get the Staff of Purity over here. Doesn't even tell us where to get it. Okay. So there's several different areas to go towards. So... Uh, I believe it's down into the left will be a boss. Uh, it depends on which one you see first. Usually I just do whatever one I see first. This area over here is going to be blocked off. But if I go down here, let's see what this area is. Oh, it's a dead end. Usually I want to say down to the left is a boss, and we can go do the boss. That will give us a skill point. And there's another area where you get a quest to get a bunch of like gems later. And we could do that one as well. It's just grabbing a teardrop. Maybe it's down this way. Oh. Dead and looks like. Level up our gems. Uh, where do I have the build? Over on a YouTube, Abdul. I'll, I'll try to upload one on TikTok as well. It's just... The walkthroughs are too long to put on TikTok because TikTok has a one hour limit right now. I'm sure it'll change in the future. Probably just don't want people uploading full movies. So now we're in the reliquary over here so we can find the teardrop. So this one is an optional quest. Oh, also we can go over this as well later, but there's a way to open up that uh, thing. You can only open up that once, but you're going to get a reward if you do actually open that up. And it's brand new. Let's see if we can find the key. But there's a teardrop since we're, we already went over here. We might as well get the teardrop. So what it's going to be used for is later Lily will be able to give you like almost every single gem in the game that you'd want. So that way we don't have to go back to Siosa and you can add her to your hideout and it allows you to just have an area. So here's the teardrop. That's what we're looking for. We got the teardrop. 
We'll give it to Lily, and then Lily will basically have like almost all the gems in the game for us. Excellent. And we also get a belt. While you be so if we go to purchase time, you can see we can have pretty much most of the gems in the entire game, well, just in town, to which is awesome. Yeah. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use the waypoint. Oh, do, do we have we have a reward from it? Oh. oh, that's for Forbidden Sanctum. All right, so now uh, we're going to go back to the Relic Court and then exit out because it's just faster to do it this way. So we're going to go back to the Reverend Square. Otherwise, we'd have to walk all the way back, and this is just faster. Next up, we're going to do Valenta's Vengeance, which is uh, left and to the uh, up and to the left of where this is. So it should be like uh, control blocks. So control blocks is going to have the uh, boss. And once we defeat this boss, this is another skill point. And then once we're 67, we can actually maybe swap into flicker strike if we can. I'm not actually sure uh, when Ignite is converted into Scorch, I don't know if it counts as doing it. That's something we're gonna have to maybe test out. Look for like a break in one of these if we can. There we go. Just use your mobility skill, whether you use Leap or Dash, it's up to you. Or is it two gen? If it's two gen, we do it. If it's not, I don't really care for it. Rog is actually really good, but you have to know what you're doing. Like I said, it's like several hours just teaching how to craft. Uh, and like that'd be trying to teach you to craft like one thing whereas rog I mean you're getting Like each individual thing to learn how to craft the armor and what the weighted rolls are. It's <laughs> It's not gonna be beginner friendly. That's why I don't mess with him in terms of like a new player's guide It, it would take no joke if you want to teach all the like how to effectively use him is probably 10 hours like, I'm not even over-exaggerating on that. All right, anyways, Valenta is the boss that we're looking for over here, so we just smack the boss, and uh, it will go down eventually. Uh, th there's going to be some phases, so there's going to be some times where the boss goes away for a little bit, and then it comes down, swoop down. Is the boss? There it is. It's hiding. Uh, right now, we don't even need to pop the onslaught flask. Move out of the way. There we go, and he is dead. So now that we got him dead, go to the other area. You return from Grab this, and then we can also get rid of this, because more like this is not gonna be better than what we have, as we really needed it for a lot of the uh, strength. I remember we got this a while back ago. And then now we gotta go to the right side, Rev Square. Well, it shows from the right side, but it's actually, it should be, it should be this way. Oh, there's a there's two of these. Nice. We summon our little golem buddy because he's dying. Now, I'm hoping that we can get that guy to be a lot tankier. Well, this is doing like, crazy damage. But later we're going to get a bunch more um, stats. What are we down on? Was it? We're 4% off on cold resistance. Which is not even that, that big of a deal. So up 10 seconds of the meteor. Where's the last monster? Nice. Now we have the lightning and we get the meteor. So you can have them both up at the same time. Interesting. Uh, let's keep it going. Torch quartz is what we're looking for. And then we have to kill the, the boss that got reassembled. Uh, at level 67 is when you can actually equip one of the strongest swords in the game called Oro's Sacrifice. It's got like 800 DPS, which is pretty dang big. Ooh, almost. Almost ripped over there. Ooh. 
Ooh, he is dangerous. Oh my gosh, that guy was a... Uh, a loop pinata. Kill these guys. Also, I probably should have mentioned this a little bit earlier, but if I hit Z as in zebra, that's the default key to make the stuff appear and not appear. I always have the whole thing appear the whole time. It just makes things easier, but that guy was great. Oh, we didn't touch the bismuth thing. I think that that's one of the things we needed for uh, the uh, settlers. To get the upgrade on the boat. That's what I want. To get two of those ships to come back at once, it means... Uh, every, you know, 40 minutes, I'm just going to get a big, giant loot box. I lo love it. We're almost 67, so once we're 67, big, big increases on the, the defensive side of things. As far as offense goes, we really need to get a six-link, like, uh... Ideally, we just get some sort of six-link sword, and it shouldn't be that expensive. But I'm not going to get a six-link now, because I feel like it's more realistic to get one once we get to the end of the game, once we finish it. Because hopefully by then, we'll get enough currency, maybe spend like 10 Chaos Orbs, which I want to say is probably our biggest purchase. So I think the biggest thing that we spent was a 5 Link, which was 5 Chaos. This thing isn't even worth it right now. This thing is probably worth like two, one, 1 Chaos Orb at this point in the game. It's just in the first day, uh, I think we got this in within the first day or two, um, things are a little bit more expensive. But later, if it's not 6 Link or really, really good, it's just going to be worth like 1 Chaos Orb or... People won't even try to list it. What build are we going for? We're going to be going for Flicker Strike. So I'm probably going to do a Oros Sacrifice. Or we could play Lightning Strike, Frost Blades. They're all kind of the same skill. Well, Flicker Strike is not the same skill, but uh, Lightning Strike and uh, Ice Blades, they're very similar in the design. It's just one of them is Lightning, one of them is Cold. Or is, it, is it Ice Blade or Frost Blade? It's like the same thing, though. But, uh,. Anyways, now we're in the Desecrated Chambers, and this is a giant little loop area. It's basically where we were before. But once we get this uh, level up, which we should be able to level up before the boss fight. Pretty massive. And I want to swap off this axe for two reasons. Uh, one, the sword is just... I just like how the sword looks. But it's also because uh, the axe will have a higher strength requirement. And our belt right now is basically giving us the ability to even use our stuff but that will change later because I want to change the belt to have a bunch of resistances or I could just run immortal flesh and get negative resistances in belt that's actually probably what I'll do uh, and then I'll probably get way better gloves and rings to kind of match out the resistances Awesome. Except for regenerating like 500 life per second. Um, all the small damage is like irrelevant. But we really won't get hit that all that often anyways with this build. Alright, so now let's show the difference in terms of how much tankier we'll be after we kill this thing. Okay. So uh, our uh, defensive stats over here are chance to... Uh, we're only really looking at one stat over here, which is the evasion range. So about 54% chance to just not take any damage. Evade in this game is just you don't take any damage. Let's see how much this is going to actually change when we swap armors. So boom, we're now at 73. We swap to this helmet, boom, 77. And how much uh, physical mitigation we have. It swapped from, we have 20% damage uh, reduction to 31 damage reduction with this helmet. And this also, when we walk, we can see our footprints, which is kind of cool. And it's a really cool looking helmet too. Uh, I just really like it because it gives you movement speed. I really like movement speed. And uh, we have two skill points to put in, so let's go put those in as well. So, uh, we can also run. Let's get rid of that. Everything. Oh, our gloves do not have evasion, so I can't get that uh, evasion. So, there, there's a lot of stuff that we can get up here uh, that is good. We're actually just going to go push towards the life nodes over here. So, there's like a bunch of life over here, which is great. And uh, we can also fill in these ones eventually if we want to. And then later we're going to do a respec over here and we're going to remove a bunch of the attack speed because we'll get attack speed in other areas. Let's continue. 
So we're gonna go all the way to the bottom. But now we're gonna have to activate Onslaught manually. Which is through the potion, but that's fine. Eventually what we're gonna do is everything's gonna be automated. And I'm not gonna have to push any of my flasks, it's just all of it just automatically activates, which is great. I love it. Let's go ahead and go to this area. So I have to kill Avarius the Reassembled. Okay, here we go. If we move just a little bit further away, we can have him get hit by both of the things. It actually increases your DPS if you do it this way. You see, oh man, he just... Wow, that was actually very impressive. Okay. So now we go give the uh, staff to Bannon. I'm just going to go pop and convert himself. And then it doesn't really matter what we take because I'm just going to sell it right back to him. Alright, let me talk to him. He's gonna say, like, let's go. Oh. Uh, this visit for Bidden Sanctum is what this is. Uh, we'll, we'll worry about that later. It's like a, it's kind of like a, almost like a rogue, like, where you're just not really supposed to get hit at all. It's another, like, league mechanic, which I'm sure you can invest into. But, uh, now we are gonna go back to the Ravage Square, and we're gonna go to an area that was kind of blocked off before. Because now we have access to it. We're gonna talk to Innocence, and he's gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna laser it. It was only 22 minutes for this one. Ready, oh, we should have talked to Einhard, but it's, it's too late now. start working on getting a six link and running the proper things the reason why i try not to have too many blues in the very beginning or like very strict things we could also have run returning projectiles that's another option but for we're killing stuff so fast it really doesn't matter it comes to a point where like if you're doing enough damage and there's probably a lot of different things that you could run with this now uh in fact in a long long time ago like it was expedition league they like nerfed all of the the gems so they kind of equalize them this thing's gonna take too long to kill it's because it's an einhard beast and some of those just have way over tuned hp and it's not really really important to get that kill and we're coming up to the next area and then it's the final boss Am I finished with uh, First Ascendant? There's an update actually to, is it 29th? I know there's an update very, very soon for the game. And we're, we're going to be doing the brand new boss. Like, I've already done every single uh, boss in hard mode in that game. So, we pretty much finished the game. But there's going to be an update soon. And we're going to come back for the update for sure. Like, it's not like, sometimes as content creator, it kind of sucks. Because, like, like, a new game will come out. I'll play it. And then they'll be like, did you quit Diablo? And like, no, bro. It's just a new game, man. Like, the new PoE came out. Oh, dude, he quit Diablo forever. And it's like, no. When Diablo comes out with something new, we'll be playing Diablo. When Path of Exile comes out with something new, like, right now, we're going to be on this. So, we're never really finished with certain games. Like, I'll always come back to, like, uh, other games if there's, like, a new update. This one has a, a green thing, so I'm pretty sure it's like, uh, call it like, it's, a t it's called a touched monster. So those ones you want to try to fight as they could drop some good stuff. Unfortunately, nothing really good dropped from that, but it's just a chance. <laughs>
Got a bunch of gold for that, so that was good. Alright, we are at the final moments. It shouldn't be all dark like this, so I don't know what the heck's causing it. But, uh, anyways, final boss. We you probably don't need to make a portal anyways, because we get to respawn on it now. You used to have to make a portal right there, it's just out of habit. Did they change this? Is this brand new? They made this whole area dark? I've never seen this. Could be because we a activated the thing and made it all dark, but... Nonetheless, this is the final boss of the campaign. And we are doing crazy amounts of damage to him. So how he works is the same thing as before. We attack him and then his heart comes out and we attack the heart. Then he'll put his heart back into his chest and then we attack him and his heart pops out again. Damn, it's really hard to see because everything's all dark. Like I said, it's probably not supposed to do this. I'm going to see if this resets the colors because I don't think that you're supposed to fight the boss like that. Um, it might have been because we touched the like little mechanic. Maybe it's their new color palette. I don't know. But it's usually not like this. Because the stuff is like very dark red, unless I'm colorblind. Uh, I feel like it's very difficult to see. Don't stand in any of those. It'll do damage when he does this little clap attack. Don't stand in the fire. That move can be a little bit dangerous. We just got lucky and just didn't really take too much damage. Really good damage. region are we getting with this? 100? Okay, that's not too bad. We should probably just run, uh, like, what would have been smarter, actually, and then we could just run Immortal Flesh. Oh, you know what? We needed the strength for our item, though. So that's actually a non-option. I'm gonna say we could just run, uh, something that gives us a bunch of resistances to all elements, and it's like, uh, Purity of Elements. It just gives you a bunch of resistances. And then we just run Immortal Flesh, and then we are good to go. We can also look into swapping to Flicker Strike. Stand right here. We're good. No problem at all. Easy boss fight. This heart gonna be coming out. Two items. Oh, is that a new ring? What is that? The diamond ring? Did we just hit the jackpot? We got a, a sulfur flask, which increases our damage. Oh, wait, hold on. We're about to take some damage over time there. So it's kind of a cool item. It reflows other uh, flasks. Kind of a special unique. And then we got the diamond ring. The Grados Signet. So it gives us attack speed, cast speed, energy, some life. Attacks inflict unnerve on critical strike for four seconds. So if I want to hold this down... It makes it so they take more spell damage and attack damage. So spells give more... So spell... Okay, so it's supposed to be for like some sort of hybrid build. Is it really worth anything? Oh, it's a brand new item. Like I said, I haven't seen that before. So let's see if that item that we got is actually worth anything. Maybe we got a jackpot. Maybe it's memes. So the only way to do it is to find out. So Grat... Gratis Signet. And enter. And it is worth absolutely nothing. Unlucky. So we're going to talk to the uh, NPCs, and we are going to go back to the docks. And uh, we're going to go talk to Lani. Lani will give you two skill points, which is awesome. So if we talk to Lily, you're going to be able to set sail. That's at the very end. So we're now going to talk to Lani. But this is not it. We are not done with the game. Let me see if I type in slash passage now. Uh, okay, so the only one that we actually want to say zero is deal with the bandits, because... Uh, you can get a skill point if you kill all the bandits. So we have every single skill point quest done. Yes. 
uh, again, deal with the bandits is a special one because we side with the Lyra for 15 to all of the resistances, which I think is way more worth it. So as far as uh, what we're going to put uh, our points into, uh, again, we were going to get more HP. There's also this uh, life and uh, mana leech. That's not a bad thing to get either. We can also, if we need to get more uh, accuracy, this also gives us crit. Uh, we don't need it right now, but I'm just going to go get way more HP. HP is good. <laughs> And uh, we'll have to also, again, make sure we check out, make sure we have more uh, accuracy ratings. But we're, what we're going to do for upgrades here, since this one was kind of short, uh, what we're going to look for for upgrades uh, is specifically looking at a, another weapon. We want to get a six link, and our current one right now is sitting at 875 DPS. So we're, we're going to look for, um, and this you can get through time. Uh, I'm going to be dropping the end game stuff, but I just want to show you what we're kind of looking for. So ideally we'd be looking for a two-handed uh, melee weapon. We want, I don't know if this actually lets us do links. Let me see. Um, first, what we're going to do really quick is I'm going to grab my character. So how I give you guys all these, what I do is I grab my character and I make sure we get all the passive skill tree. And then I go to uh, export. I'll show you guys kind of how this tool works. You don't have to have this tool. It's just, it's, it's nice to have though. Uh, if you want to share your build with someone else. So we go to uh, export and we just go generate and we go to share and it's going to give us like a little link and we can copy and paste this. And then there's two of them. I actually use both. So I use pub, uh, pub in and pwe.ninja. I like that ninja's website a lot more, but people like the other one as well. So uh, now what we can do is we can go to items and let me see if I can go trade for the weapon and can I go for, okay. So can I go for six links? And then let's say I have like 10 chaos orbs and see if we can even get anything. So for five chaos, I can get a ax that will give me, oh, it's corrupted, which is really bad. <laughs> so this is not gonna be super good. In fact, it's saying we're gonna lose DPS, but we actually do gain DPS because we can actually swap uh, another gem in. I just really don't like running axes. I want a sword, but that might cost like 10 chaos orbs, but it's fine. If I was to do, let's, let's re redo the search. If I was to go, um, whoops, not price item. Um, if I was to change this to six links, and then let's say we put like uh, 10 chaos orbs, right? Let's see if we can get a sword. Still axes, all axes. <laughs> you see, the yeah, axes are cheaper. But um, let's see what what these would give us. So these are, a lot of these are like negative in terms of damage. So since we can't get a six link here, the other option is get a body armor of six links. So you can, uh, whoops, uh, let's go for this one. Let's say that we would put in 20. I'm just going to show this for example. I'm not going to buy this right now, but let's say if we get six links over here, um, this one is giving us the most stats. And it's, unfortunately, it's going to always show armor because it's showing it as we really need to get armor. And it's showing that additional physical damage reduction is like really good and just it's just giving us a lot more survivability, but we scale evasion with this character. Still not bad to get some armor on, on a build, but we can also just use like the, the website to look for a, another upgrade here. The reason why is we would probably benefit uh, off of not getting a six link. So what we could do for the weapon here is we can just look for any weapon and what we could actually look for is Oro Sacrifice too. That actually wouldn't be a bad idea. So I can show you guys uh, kind of what I would want to go for uh, which is a brand new build uh, that we just need to swap out basically one gem for and I'll show you kind of the performance of what that looks like if we can get that up and running which is the flicker strike uh, skill so um, that item is called Oro sacrifice uh, actually this pro it's probably super cheap I can just go pick up one just to show you guys how this works as I want to show you guys kind of uh, what we plan to actually go for like I said it's a really really cheap item we might be able to buy a five link one that just dropped let me see for 40 chaos no one's gonna buy it all right so uh let's just go and oh that's right because our this is tied to our main source of damage uh we could do let's just go show it off um so it's a super cheap item let's put one chaos orb in it let's just waste one chaos orb and just get a whatever one so we're just looking for the highest dps and then we're just going to whisper them so the reason why this is so good is it gives you culling strike which means if the enemy is 10 percent or under it's just going to instantly delete the enemy you have 20 percent chance to ignite you get a good amount of attack speed and the dps on this weapon is pretty dang high so we're gonna go whisper this person and see if we can pick one of these up and i'll show you how this thing works all right there we go he's probably super happy that someone actually wanted this thing i actually like the item i think it's pretty cool but uh it's not uh, what I would consider very meta. It's just very cheap too. 
Um, so I like it. Really cheap item to give you uh, the frenzy charges. And you'll see kind of how this works uh, once we get it. And then uh, we'll put our skills in this thing. Oh, he canceled that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that flicker strike gem, which is over here. We're going to put it in this. Good. Accept. Put in the chaos orb. He's going to give us that. And I'll show you what this does. So let's go to somewhere in Act 10. We'll just go kill some stuff. So I'm going to show you guys and get you guys kind of prepped up. But uh, for what I plan to play, if you want to stick with Lightning Strike or whatever, Frost Blades, hey, do what you want to. It's basically the same thing, though. It's just that uh, the skill that we're using to do our damage is going to be a little bit different. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put the, uh, the cold damage. We're not going to be running Lightning Strike because we have Flicker Strike. And then we throw in uh, Cruelty and... Oh, I'm missing another gem. We can maybe run close combat over here. Okay, there we go. And then we're going to run this weapon. And uh, we will also need to put in Vitality somewhere. So we'll put it in the helm. All right, so I'll show you what the skill looks like. And you can decide for yourself if you like this playstyle. And I personally like it. It's very, very fast. Hopefully we can get enough Frenzy Chargers because how the skill works is we need Frenzy Chargers in order for it to work. Okay, so you can see it's on a cooldown unless we get a Frenzy Charge. Now, uh, I guess when we ignite, it probably doesn't actually count. But you can see, like, how fast it is. Okay, there it is. It, it, it's kind of doing its thing. We need to get, like, uh, these frenzy charges uh, to be more consistent. Even though we have one up at all times, it's because it's considered a minimum frenzy charge and it can never actually be spent. But how it works is, once we have all of our charges up, uh, we're going to be able to teleport, kill, teleport, kill, teleport, kill. And... There is one downside right now that I've noticed with this. So, how it normally works is you're supposed to be able to... Oh, I'm going to get rid of this guy. You see, it, because it has a cooldown right now, it's kind of bad. But later, it will be actually really good. So, how it works is you gain a frenzy charge if your attack ignites an enemy. Since we actually can no longer ignite because we got the Warden uh, Oath of Summer... We actually, this thing gives us a big source of damage. So uh, I would need to solve my frenzy charges from another source. So there's uh, several ways to do it. We can get uh, like reflect bleed. That's one way, uh, which is a really difficult thing. And I probably wouldn't recommend it. It's called like the golden rule. Uh, there's also feral's fur. Uh, we can also run blood rage. And uh, if we did run frostbite, I believe it's frostbite. Uh, on kill, you will gain a frenzy charge, but then on the boss fights, this becomes very bad because you're not going to just, unless you kill the boss in one hit, it becomes another problem. But there's other things that we can do to make this a lot better. There's something called multi-strike. I don't know if we still have somewhere. Uh, but there's other ways, basically, to uh, get these frenzy charges. But basically, what we would do is teleport, kill, teleport, kill, and it makes the, the, the build feels really damn good. But that is another source of uh, uh, ways that we can play. But I just want to give you guys a sneak peek since this one was a little bit shorter. But uh, now that we've shown off this, we're, we're, what we uh, plan to do is actually go and do the other Trial of Ascendancy. Uh, but I don't think we really need to show that off. I mean, we've already done two of them. It's the same thing. You, you go over um, once we have all the trials done. And in the end game over here, um, so get this done. If you can't do it right now, because what level are we? 60. Seven. It wants us to be 68. It's fine. It's not the big deal. Um, so you could do this, uh, but I want to show you guys the end game, and I'm going to reserve that for like the end game video guide in a another part. So what you can do is, if you want to, you can try this. If you're unable to complete it, don't worry. You can level up a couple times, then come back. There's no penalty if you fail it. You just you wasted a little bit of time, but that's not that big of a deal. Um, but ideally, you want to get this done, and then uh, what we're going to do is we will get this, the Avatar of the Wilds. But like I said, it's the same exact thing. It's got the, all the traps, and you want to take it slow. That's the thing we've already done before. So do that, uh, and then we will... Well, you can attempt it one or two times, and if you can't do it, don't worry. We'll show off the end game, and then you can come back and do it, because maybe your HP isn't up to par or whatever. Uh, but this is going to be a huge, huge DPS boost. So yeah, we'll show that off in the next part, which will be in part... Uh, 11, but part one of the end game guide. But anyways, congrats if you made it, man. You completed a Path of Exiles campa campaign, but there's a lot more fun stuff. The fun hasn't even really started, guys. The, the end game is where it's at for this game. But um, yeah.
congrats for finishing the campaign. You've completed the, the campaign, and we will resume in the next part. But anyways, drop a like and I'll see you guys in the end game part one. And by the way, the thumbnails are, are going to be re reversed for the end game. That's kind of how I set it up, so it kind of makes a little bit more sense because it's going to be titled part one of the end game. But the thumbnail will look very similar. It's just it's going to be flipped. Just giving you guys a heads up. Anyways, congrats. I'll see you guys in part one of the end game very soon.